I am the contrarian and this is my world. I'm Rajat Agarwal from BGR India. Whether it makes sense to buy the latest flagship smartphone or not, I say save your money, don't buy the latest smartphone, buy a mid end phone and I'll take Rajiv on that. He's buying a flagship, top-of-the-line phone, one that we've always aspired to buy today, the world's worst decision. Are you stupid enough to think that spending 50,000 rupees will get you the world's best technology, one that you cannot live without? Are flagship phones the only way to go to make sure that the dent in your wallet is also as big a dent as in your ego that you bought the wrong product? Well, I'm not saying it. My guest today said this. Rajat Agarwal is with us. So I'm going to give you about a minute, minute mm -hmm. and a half to make your case. All right. And then I'll be on your case. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Let's start. Uh, so here's what. For 50,000 rupees, it's not something additional that you're getting that would change your life. So for instance, something like a heartbeat monitor, right? I don't know. I don't get it. Like, why would you want it? When it, there are a lot of apps that do the same thing. You know, it's not something that it's tracking your heartbeat live or something like that. Similarly, if you see in terms of displays, what we'll get to see now, you know, we already have very sharp 1080p displays. A lot of them coming up with 2K displays and stuff like that doesn't make a difference to the naked eye. You can't make out those individual pixels that you're getting more pixels out there. In terms of processors, I think the previous generation processors were good enough. Right, We don't have the kind of applications or the kind of use cases that use that can use the extra processing power, right? The time where revolutionary things happened with the next generation of anything mm -hmm. has stopped, okay? Right. The wow of technology now has become a slightly more muted wow, okay? It's not a rooftop, let's go and, ch you know, chest thump to say that right. this is what we've bought and this is what we have. It's evolutionary uh, now, it has been for a while. You know, the thing is, it's not just about smartphones, right? It's not moving across categories. So for instance, first we thought that 3D TVs would pick up, we'll need stuff to shoot 3D videos with. That never really happened. Exactly. Similarly for 4K, everyone thought that 4K TVs by now would be like everywhere. Right, there would be 4K content but there's a everywhere. Content problem yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, you know, and you... even apart from content problem, the whole it's not just content; it's hardware plus content plus consumers willing to move there. Right, it's it's not just one thing. Even if one thing is missing, it all falls apart. Come yeah. down to this. I mean, the whole hallmark of or any technological mm -hmm. company is to make profits from consumers, right. invest some of it back into R&D to move to the next generation of devices. Right. You're just basically taking away and breaking down that business model and saying, don't buy flagship phones, there's nothing great, don't buy new 4K TVs, there's nothing great don't in that, buy don't the, do this. Don't, don't do buy the current crop of flagship smartphones, right? The last crop was like pretty nice, right? Okay. They actually changed because that's when we were seeing the so, whole so you're shift. Saying that you're saying that, you know, going from a quad core to an octa core, going Doesn't from a, a better megapixel count on a camera, a better display, uh, a better, better looking display, phones. Better display is very relative, better display is when you can actually make out the difference, right? I mean, again, I'll give you the same uh, analogy that we did last time, wherein earlier, uh, when Apple did the shift to retina displays, right, you could actually see the difference. When, when the shift happened from WVGA, to 720 or to 1080p, you could see the difference. Currently, you're having a 2K display like some of the brands. How much time have you spent with the 2K display other than maybe in a showcase product uh, or on the OPPO or any of the yeah, other, or the LG? Yeah, I, I have and it's not Enough just- Enough time? I, it's not just me spending time, it's also what everyone else is saying. Those people who have used it for a long time. How w Would you agree if I was to say that uh, all of this is an evolutionary scale where the software, the apps, the websites, the browsers all need to scale up for the ecosystem yeah, to yeah. be ready for a 2K but, phone. But what you've seen is 2K display yeah, yeah. with all redundant technology yeah. running and, and, so and that is that, where I'm coming to that it has to move together, right? It cannot be a case wherein, okay, today you so buy... why would I not buy something no, why would I, keeping me no, future ready? No, why would I pay 15k extra on something that will get me features six or ten months down the line when there might be a better product which is very well integrated with all the software and all the apps and the entire package. 
flagship phones set the trend for the future, one. And they are also a showcase for the future for economy phones. Technology percolates uh, down. Absolutely. To, but yeah. here, by the very fact that you're not going to endorse this amazing technology, uh, 2K phones have to become a consumer reality of mass market proportions and flagships for 1080p to become a S and 10,000 rupee phone. You're taking away the very idea of amazing technology mm -hmm. bought by all in flagships coming down to cheaper technology yes. of the previous generation. Yes. You're just right. saying, let's ignore the current crop of everything. I'm, I'm Don't saying, buy it, it's useless. I'm saying the 2014 crop of flagship smartphones are not worth it because they do not really push the envelope like you are saying, right? Is that the reason that so much more bundling has started happening in flagships? Because they suddenly realize that the phone in itself is not enough. You've got to give us extra. I, there are smart bands and JBL headphones. Yeah. And, I and mean, flagships used to be the most Kali Dabai could Dabbas. buy. Absolutely. They seem to be stocked now. So you think I, that's the reason I, that I, they themselves know there's no compelling reason to buy? I, I think another thing that we are seeing is the cycle at which these phones are coming, right? Earlier it used to be Wonder. like, okay, fine, every March I'll have a new Galaxy, right? Every, it's say, okay, January okay. or something like that, there would be a new Xperia. Every uh, sort of April or something like that, we'll have a new HTC flagship smartphone, right? And every September, October, we'll have a new iPhone. Today, what is happening is your Galaxy S series is also a flagship smartphone and the space that we are in, even your Note series is also considered to be a smartphone, right? So you typically have two flagship devices in one year. Skip this particular cycle, right? <laughs> and okay. you might actually see companies pushing the envelope. You said skip this generation yeah. because the next generation will give you. And then you said, you know, put in a slick phone with two days of battery life and I'll buy it today. Right for everybody, including manufacturers, yes. brands, consumers, those billion dollar campaigns that are running out here, educate us. Mm -hmm. What are we waiting for, for the next generation of phones that you're telling people to wait for? What are the features mm -hmm. that you think mm -hmm. are very sure mm -hmm. and must be there mm -hmm. for people to say, here's my money? So here's what. Let's, yeah, and give yeah. me a composite. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. So it does not have to be hardware only. It has to be a mix of hardware with really, really smart be, software. Be, give, me, give me examples. Right. What do you think? I mean, so it, 2K screen doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. The megapixels don't matter. Uh, till the time it's a good camera, it, it does not matter. matter. The, the uh, processor doesn't matter. Till the time everything works, it does not matter. Okay, so now tell me, what is it that will make you put your money down? For me, typically the biggest disappointments have been... No, tell us yeah. now. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, waiting yeah. for the future yeah, yeah. phone yeah. that people okay. should buy. Okay, the future phone that people should buy will have will have a battery that lasts you two days. Fantastic, right? Agreed. That is something that I can't do without. Wherein I can use it with one hand, you know. I don't really want a massive display, right? I mean, five inch is too much. Oh, oh five is too much? Yeah, three other killer features would be really smart software. You know, we have not seen smart software yet, right? wherein the phone really, really knows you. I mean, something like her, probably, uh, the operating system. So you're yeah. asking people to yeah. wait till 2018, then uh, skip eight generations uh, no, of I'm, I'm, I'm not saying skip her that. Her is not yeah, coming yeah, next, I know. next year I, for I sure. I know, but you know what? A lot of features like From that, Google, wherein, yeah. you know, you can talk to it. You know, Cortana that way is, I hope it comes to India, India very soon, correct. right? It is really Looking smart, right? Yes. Uh, I, I hope that Google Now becomes something like that as well, because Google Now has really smart features, right? Where it knows... Hey, Siri. Pardon? Hey, Siri also. Uh, Siri is looking to be very dumb right now. Usually I don't end by agreeing with my guests, but I'll agree with one mm -hmm. thing, that the hardware spec war is yeah. over and the quicker most companies realize it, the better. The disruptors, the differentiators will come from, well, not so much an intimate relationship with the yeah. phone, but at, least, <laughs> but at least a better relationship with your phone where it does understand you. And I'm really hoping that happens in the next year, but yeah. somehow the skeptic in me says that we have about a year or so Absolutely. More before I, things really dramatically yeah. you change know, again. You know, right now, a lot of companies have a lot of hardware tech that is But this is what the problem is. Them, that's the right? game they've played yeah. for years yes. now. Yes, I, I They think, need to reboot. I, I think consumers themselves are getting very smart now, uh, right? They know what they want 
uh, unlike uh, most of the times earlier when we used to get questions like, okay, my budget is 25,000 rupees and I want the best and the latest phone that I can People get, don't write right? Like they that. don't write anymore like that. They are very Choices, clear that features. Uh, I, I want a phone that has a camera that is this much. I want to play games on it or I want battery life, or I want a display that's this I know, big. so they're right. very specific. They sometimes even know which three models they want. Absolutely. They can't choose between Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Rajat, it's been fantastic talking to you. We are out of time totally. Right. But best of luck for your search for an intimate relationship. Yeah, right. <laughs> in every which way. So there we have it. Flagship phones today are doing enough, but are they doing enough for it to be a buying criteria? Maybe, maybe not. Do we support them at this level again? The choice is completely yours, but do remember, the future does look extremely exciting for some people like Rajat. And for some others, it should just be a smartphone, but it should be truly living up to its name, a smart phone. Till that doesn't happen, keep watching Contrarian. We'll be back with you next week. See you then. Thank you very much, Rajat. Thank you.